All right, use the AC method to factor this. So we start by doing A times C, right? What multiplies to AC and adds to B. So that's negative 30, negative 7. What two numbers did you use? Negative 10 and 3. We use that to rewrite the middle term. And then we just bring down the other thing. So we just took negative 7x and split it up into two things, negative 10x and 3x. And now that we have four terms, what factoring method do we do? Grouping, right? So we group, and we group, and we do GCF three times. We do it once for this group. The GCF there is 2x. The leftovers are x minus 5. We do GCF for this group. The GCF is 3. The leftovers are x minus 5. And then we do GCF for all this whole thing. What do they all have in common? X minus 5. And the leftovers are 2x plus 3. Okay. So that's our AC method, right? And it works just fine. You can use this for any trinomial that will factor. It'll be, it'll be great. But let's do, um, let me show you the shortcut. I'm going to call it, normally I've heard it called swing. But I saw a name for it on the internet the other day that I kind of like better. It's called slide and divide. And the reason why I like this better is the two words sort of remind you of what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so the slide and divide, um, slide means you take the A value and you slide it down and you multiply it by the C. So in that way, it begins just like AC method, all right? So you do 2 times negative 15, you get negative 30. So we still need to know what multiplies to negative 30 and adds to negative 7. So this part begins the same, and we get negative 10 and 3. But now here comes the divide part. I divide by the A term, so I slide the A term. Now I divide by the A, which was 2. And 10, negative 10 divided by 2 is what? negative 5, and then 3 halves, you can't divide, so I'm just going to write 3 halves. But then I take the 2 and slide it back up here. So if any time it has a denominator, you slide it back up. Okay. Here are some problems with, this, with the slide and divide. Um, one is that it's easy to forget the steps because there there is math and there is a real math reason why this works, but to show you it's really long and complicated, it wouldn't help you remember, okay? Um, and it's easy to forget the steps. It's easy. Most people always forget this part, the divide by two. If this was just a one right here, then this would be this would never fail you. But once there's something different, everyone forgets that dividing part or the sliding back up part. And so that's the thing about shortcuts is they're harder to remember. Now, the grouping, the AC method here that we did in red, the good, of, the pros about that is it makes sense logically. You're really just doing FOIL backwards. And so in that way, it's easy to remember what you're supposed to be doing. The con is it's longer. If you can... If you, in an ideal world, always remembered this shortcut and never forgot what to do, this would go way faster. Granted, you never forget to do that divide by 2, which many people do. This takes a little bit longer, but it won't mess stuff up for you. And then also the way, way the slide and divide can mess you up is if this had had a GCF in the beginning and you didn't notice, the slide and divide will sort of hide that from you, and you won't realize you should have taken it out, um, whereas this one wouldn't have done that. It would have kept the GCF, and you would have noticed to take it out at the end. So that's the, that's the pros and cons of each one. So it's up to you to decide which one you like. Now that you've seen this, I'm going to use slide and divide today as we go through the problems, just to, so you can see it several times. You're not obligated to do that. All right, so here's what's what. Today we are... This is day two for dividing rational expressions. We're going to start out with this type of problem that's pretty much almost exactly like what we did Friday. Only on Friday, you're 
factors were already there for you and we just had to cancel. Today we're going to practice getting those factors and then canceling. And that's type one problems. And then we have these type two. What do you, what, what's the most obvious difference between this one and this one? Or I should say how many fractions are in type one? And how many fractions are in type two? two. And so when we get to that, I'll tell you how we're going to handle that. But we're going to just spend some time with the type one problem. Um, real quickly at the top, I want you to write down just some notes about all the different factoring methods we have. Okay, so that way when you're going to look at each numerator and denominator, you have sort of a running list of your options. Um, the very first thing we learned in this, or the last unit, the factoring unit was GCF. Okay, always, always, always check for GCF first. Then after GCF, we learned grouping. And the reason why it was in that order is because grouping is just like we did in the warm up. It's just GCF three times. GCF, GCF, and then one big long GCF. After grouping, we learned AC method. That's for trinomials. And that's because we were rewriting it into four terms and then grouping after that. Um, and then today I showed you the slide and divide. And then the last one was, I'm going to write DOS for difference of two squares. That's where the terms are perfect squares. And we take square roots of both and we make a minus version and a plus version. Okay. So these are our main four options for factoring stuff. So in type one, we are going to step one, factor the numerator and denominator. So and if we're just looking at the numerator, which of those methods do you think applies to 10x minus 120? Which of those methods here do you think applies to 10x minus 120? GCF. Another option is difference of two squares. Let's talk about how you can decide which one is which. It is two terms that are being subtracted, but here's why it's not difference of two squares. Because these are not perfect squares. The bottom is, but the top is not. And so the top only can be GCF. And then the bottom is difference of squares because it's two things being subtracted, but those two things are perfect squares, right? So then to actually factor the top, what is the GCF of 10x and 120? 10, right? Two goes in, five goes in, but we want the greatest thing that goes in. And so it's 10. Leading me x minus 12. And then the difference of squares on the bottom, it's going to be x and 12, right? We take the square root of each of those, and we make a minus version and a plus version. So then this part of step one, let's multiply by the reciprocal or keep change flip where necessary. It is not necessary when you have only one fraction. I'll explain that when we get to type two. So right here, we will. So right here for this part of step one, just put NA. I don't care. And sorry about the noise. And then for step two, simplify it with me. It'll go off. By the time we get back there, it'll be done. There's no point in so simplify by canceling out. So we have this. I'm only rewriting it because I, so it's clear on the example, but um, otherwise I would have canceled out from that step. What cancels out here? X minus 12. Leaving me 10 on top and X plus 12 on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So we factored and then canceled out. That is the answer. So down here, we're going. Before I go to type two example, I want us to work numbers one and two, okay? And I'm going to get you started by us talking through which method we need. And number one, it's the same method, top and bottom. What is it? AC because it's trinomials. So AC or the slide and divide shortcut. And then over here, number two, what do you think? What method applies to the top?
Ah, oh, this is so smart. First, you have to do greatest common factor, and then after greatest common factor, what is it? AC. And then what is the factoring method for the bottom? GPS. Okay, so take a few minutes. For sure, get through number one. We'll talk about it, and then um, I'll give you some time to get started on number two. Number one, if you were doing the shortcut method, the slide and divide, A is one, you slide it over, one times six is six, what multiplies to six and adds to five? What did you come up with? Three and two. Did anybody try six and negative one really, really hard? Because this problem right here, always people are trying to do six and negative one, and they're just trying to force it and force it and force it, because it does add to five, but it doesn't multiply to positive six, right? And I see more people just staring like, what? What else is there if it's not six and negative one? For some reason, they never come up with two and three. Um, and so you slide it over. Now we divide by the leading term, which was one, and that doesn't change anything. So it's just x plus two, x plus three. And then for the bottom slide and divide, a is 1 again, so you slide it, multiply it by C, which is 12, needs to add to 8, what would you come up with? 6 and 2. Now divide by the A value, which was 1, and it stays the same, 6 and 2. What cancels? X plus 2. That's gone, I'm giving me X plus 3 over X plus 3. Um, I hope y'all started on number two. Did y'all start on number two? Like you started enough, I can just start talking about it, or does anybody need some more time? Yeah, okay. Here's something I need you to understand about number two. If you had forgotten to do a GCF, okay, the GCF, what did you get for the GCF? The three. If you had for, if you had just done AC method, or, or not, not AC, if you had just done the slide and divide shortcut right here, what would happen is you'd get some factors, but you w it would cancel out the three, and you wouldn't realize there was supposed to have been a three, and it will change your final answer. So you had to have noticed the GCF first. If you were doing the AC method, what would have happened is you would have got your factors, but you would have noticed one of those factors had a GCF of three. It wouldn't have gone away the way it does with the shortcut. I'm really just saying be sure to do GCF. If you don't do GCF and you do the shortcut, you'll miss out on that GCF, and your answer won't be correct. And then GCF on the bottom is 6, leaving you x plus 2. Um, so now that we did GCF on the top, we have to do, we have to factor this trinomial. I'm going to do <coughs> slide and divide. But multiplies to negative, so we, the A is 1, slide it and multiply it by C. What multiplies to negative 10 and adds to negative 3, negative 5 and 2. Divide by the A value, doesn't change anything. So this becomes 3 times X minus 5, X plus 2, over 6 times X plus 2. And these obviously cancel, but there's one other thing I can simplify. The 3 over 6 becomes 1 over 2. So the final answer is x minus 5 over 2. Right. Those of you who got through number 2, did you get that answer? Did you get but the 3? Um, did you get close to that answer? All right, let's talk about type 2 and how it's different from type 1. I don't mean diabetes. Oh. All right, now I have to take the gun, sorry. <laughs> Here, that's not even, that's all for joke. All right. Not really, no, no, that was really not really awful. Okay. 3x over x plus 10 divided by 21 over x plus 10. 
Um, the first thing you want to do still is factor both the numerator and the denominators. Um, this is an easy problem, actually. There's not much, any, there's hardly no factoring to do. 3x is already in its factors, 3 times x. x plus 10 can't be factored because of the plus. All it really can do is be grouped together. But 21 can factor. It's 3 times 7, right? So <clears throat> I'm a, I, what I'm about to write down, I don't want you to write it down because I'm going to erase it to work the problem. But I just want to give you some um, backstory about why we're going to do the multiply by the reciprocal or keep change flip. This rule has to do when you're dividing by a fraction, which we are here. And I don't know if you remember when we talked about fractions earlier in the year. I mentioned about how brownies are my favorite dessert. And if I could eat brownies all day without getting sick or diabetes, I would totally do that. It turns up positive, though, is you can't just do that all the day. But let's say I have this pan of brownies, and, I, and it's divided into four pieces, okay? And then let's say I took each of those pieces and divided them in half. Okay, I took each piece and divided it in half. How many would I have now? Eight. So here's how this rule goes. If I had four pieces and I divide by one half, that equals eight. This is where the keep, change, flip comes in. This is the same as, because you really took one piece and broke it into two, so now you have twice as many. So if you keep the first thing the same, change the division to multiply, and flip the one over two, now it becomes two over one, you get eight. Okay, this is why we have the multiply by the reciprocal rule. Right? Or keep change flip is just a shortcut way of saying that. It's not like some random thing we just want to, you know, crush your spirits and make your high school life harder because of trying to remember it. There's actually a reason behind why we do that. So you keep the first thing the same, you change the division to multiplication, and you flip that second fraction. But we're going to do it now with the x's and stuff. Okay? So here's how that's going to go. We are going to, so here is now we're using this rule. Okay, see it says you use that only where necessary. It was not necessary for type 1. It is necessary for type 2 because it has the second fraction. So we keep the first fraction the same. It's 3 over x plus 10. Okay, so that's the keep part. The change part is you take the division, you make it multiplication. And then you flip the second fraction. So x plus 10 was on the bottom. Now x plus 10 is going to be on top. And then the 3 times 7 is on the bottom. And now we do step 2, which is cancel. Give me something that cancels. Give me one. x plus 10. What else? The 3s. And that's it. So I'm left with x on top. And seven on bottom. Okay. And the only other problem, what time are we here? 320? The only problem I want to get through before we leave is I just want us to work through three. We're going to start class with number four. If you get through number four, that's fine, but we're going to start class as a warm up with number four. I really just, if we could just get through three, I'll give you some time. I'll come around and then we'll talk about it. And then that will be our goal for the day. But just to get you started, let's talk about the methods you use for factoring. What do you think you're going to be using for this numerator here? AC. What about the bottom? Mm -hmm. Greatest common factor. What about this numerator right here? Good. Difference of squares. And what about this one? That's it, right? Nothing. That's not applicable. We cannot factor that. You're just going to group it. Okay, so take a few moments, factor. Keep change flip and see what cancels.